Hello, hello, and welcome again to a Beatles talk show podcast called Things We Said Today. This is a bi-weekly show in which we talk about anything we feel like where the Beatles are concerned. Their group years, their solo years, their recordings, their history, the news, anything we feel like. And I'm Ken Michaels, one of the three regular co-hosts of this show. Hopefully you know me for my syndicated Beatles radio program called Every Little Thing. I also host, co-host, another Beatles talk show podcast, which is on the solo Beatles called Talk More Talk. And I also have a Beatles-centric website, KenMichaelsRadio.com. So you might know me for any of those things. And I'm being joined by one of my regular co-hosts on this show, a man who's been part of New York Radio at uh, WFUV for 30, I keep forgetting, 37 years? It's, yeah, 30, yeah, 37. It's going to, I think, to be 37 in February. So 36 and a half. But who's counting? Yeah. How many shows will it take until I remember? I don't know. But uh, uh, I still don't remember your name, so don't worry about it. <laughs> That's Darren DeVivo that you just heard. Well, Hi, Darren. Hello, everyone. How are you? Thanks for listening uh, to this show. And if you listened to our last show, we had a major announcement in that our other regular co-host, Alan Cozen, is actually on a temporary leave of absence because he is busy writing uh, the first volume of several volumes of a McCartney uh, biography of his solo career, tentatively to be titled The McCartney Legacy with Adrian Sinclair. And the first volume, for which they already have a book deal, is due out in October. And so he asked Darren and myself if he could take a break from the show, and we don't want to do anything to uh, interrupt his work because we know how important uh, these series of books are going to be to Alan and Adrian. And so uh, for the time being, at least probably until the beginning of October, maybe longer, we're not sure, um, Alan won't be on the show with us. But to fill Alan's shoes, it took more than just one person. <laughs> and we knew that it would. So we had to call on the Two Legs Brigade. The two co-hosts of the Paul McCartney solo podcast show called Two Legs. And that's Tom Hunyadi, who also co-hosts Talk More Talk with me. You're all going to be quizzed on this. <laughs> and Andy Nichols. Hi, fellas. Welcome to the show. Hey, Ken. Good to, good to hear you, actually, this time around. Darren, <laughs> good to hear you as well. And definitely having one of those uh, pinch me, I must be dreaming moments because, you know, this... You know, ever since discovering this show back in 2012, it's it's you know been an inspiration and just uh, this, this is one of the best shows out there and absolutely love it. So glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Get to have Tom all the time. Uh, <laughs> speaking highly about this. <laughs> Meanwhile, these are nightmares you're having, right? Tom? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm I'm waking up right now in a cold sweat. <laughs> Thank you. Ed. Thank you for having me, guys, Ken and, and Darren and Tom. It's uh, it's great to be here. And again, like Tom said, it's a it's a pinch me moment. I remember the first time I listened to things we said today on the off chance. I was just scrolling through the Apple podcast thing and I did a, just a generic search for Beatles. And I see this Union Jack flag. And I said, this one might be good. Let's give this one a shot. And, you know, that was years ago. And I've been a, a loyal listener and it's, it's fantastic to connect with you. And uh, working with Tom over the last year on Two Legs and kind of intertwining in your circles and uh, everything that's been going on over the last year, it's just been a blast and it's a pleasure to be here today. So thank you. Yeah, All right. And, I, and actually, yeah, Tom first heard this show and then he started listening to the live broadcast of my right. show, Every Little Thing. And yep. we were talking on the phone about, you know, starting a new podcast on uh, the solo Beatles. Yeah, I mean, it just came out of, you know, a little bit of like a frustration, not that any of those, these shows are, are bad or anything, but, you know, a lot of these shows, like your show, uh, Something About the Beatles, I've Got a Beatles Podcast, for for Free, for all those guys, they all got great shows, but they're also Beatles heavy as well. So, I mean, I was always just thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we just had a, you know, a show out there that just focused on the solo Beatles and then Ken knowing how much you love the solo Beatles as well. I thought what a great opportunity to, 
you know, maybe work with you and then absolutely, you know, in Kittle Tool as well. So, you know, yeah. the show grew from that. So, uh, you know, I'm blessed really that uh, I've been able to, um, you know, get that off the ground, if you will. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and no I know comment. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I know I said to you, Tom, if, if I ever started a solo Beatles podcast, <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'd love to have it be called Talk More Talk. It's just yeah. the perfect the perfect title. It is. I mean, I remember that conversation. Well, I remember having conversation with you on when I was starting Two Legs and coming up with titles, and you had suggested Talk More Talk then. And, you know, I thought that was a great idea then, but, you know, switching to something else. But, yeah, I mean, I thought that was a perfect perfect title for, uh, for a show as well. Mm -hmm. And just in case anyone doesn't know, Tom and Andy, their podcast show is a video podcast, mm -hmm. and it's also available on lots of platforms, just the audio portion of it, too. So there's <laughs> right. so many ways that you can hear two legs, just like Talk More Talk, and our show is going to be expanded very soon on a lot of platforms, too. Right. So great to have you guys on the show. We're going to start the program with Beatle News, but to let everyone know, our topic today is going to be, since... It's such a big deal now in, in uh, social media, talking about especially McCartney's archival box sets. Everybody talks about all these archival releases. What we'd like to see in the future from specifically, we're going to do John, George and Ringo in this show. And then the next show that we do will be just on Paul. We'll do something on the Beatles as well. And that's right. actually going to be part of a two leg show. Right. You know? Yeah. So we can... Uh... I guess we can consider this part one here, and then in a couple of weeks we'll record part two, and uh, we'll we'll have fun with it with uh, Paul yeah. McCartney and, yeah. and the Beatles. And we'll get we'll get everybody's lovely faces on camera too. <laughs> <laughs> so brush your teeth, what? Aaron. <laughs> what teeth? <laughs> Comb your hair. Comb your one I hair. One <laughs> hair. <laughs> uh. So we shall start with the latest in Beatle news, and I'm sure that you know that the biggest news of the last few weeks is that another John Lennon compilation will be coming out mm -hmm. this time on John's birthday, October 9th, what would be John's 80th birthday called give me some truth. Now there are like all these other archival releases, many configurations, yep. mainly to confuse Darren, but um, <laughs> there is a one CD version, a two CD version, a deluxe box set with two CDs and a Blu-ray audio disc. And that comes with a book that is 124 pages. The book has rare photos and extensive notes from John, Yoko, and more. It also comes with a fold-out two-sided poster, mm. two postcards, and a Give Me Some Truth bumper sticker. <laughs> In addition to that, you've got a 2LP version, a 4LP version, and it also will be available digitally. This will be uh, 36 songs in total. And they have been handpicked by Yoko and Sean, which I find really interesting. Because up until now, I never heard of Sean being involved with any of John's releases. Mm. Okay, so um, there's been a mixed reaction of this online from people who are saying, we don't need another compilation of John's. There have been so many of them. Right. And yet there's always the people who feel, as we have debated here in past shows, the compilations are really important, especially for the casual fan or new fan to introduce, in this case, John's music to that audience. So can I just get a, a quick idea of how you guys feel about this compilation? Tom, yeah. we'll start with you. Yeah, I've always felt the compilations are the greatest hits were the gateway to that person's catalog, if you know, if that makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. I've always started off with like the box sets or the greatest hits when I was first collecting music. So I had no problem with this being released as a box set. What I kind of have a problem with is, yeah, I mean, it's just another compilation that, you know, us hardcore fans really maybe not need. And, you know, I know we were all hoping for a Plastic Ono band, which we, we could still possibly get, but... You know, for the hardcore, you know, there's a lot of times I feel like, you know, us hardcore fans are kind of like a little bit left behind on, on these kind of releases just because, you know, we, we want the, the younger generation to, you know, discover this music. But, you know, we already know it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so. Well, I will tell you, I don't know if I mentioned this, that all 36 songs are remixed. 
Mm -hmm. So for anyone that still wants to have something that's different, sometimes this remastering, if it's slightly better quality than what came out before, it's worthwhile for some people. But in this case, for me, the major attraction will be that it's remixed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I I wonder, because you go back and forth, back in the 2000s, you know, some of John's albums were remixed. Mm-hmm. like mind games for example and some people like the remix better than the original master yep. right and then in 2010 then the box set came out with the original masters mm-hmm. <laughs> you know so they keep going back and forth so you know it could confuse some people some people are very um true to the original they're purists right. and they don't want to tamper with it so um andy what's your take on this Luke, lukewarm uh, can mostly down to even just the the cover artwork, uh, which I think is kind of lame. But to your point about the it being remixes catches my ear because as you pointed out, the you know in the early two thousands, Yoko kind of supervised remixes of all his albums, and really for me, those are the gold standards still. I mean, the Mind Games remix from two thousand and two is still nearly twenty years on my go to version of that. So. Um, if these songs are remixed and are a little bit brighter, then that makes this this I guess worth having because the some of those songs you know we'll see how different they are you know now near, nearly 20 years later. So you know that and just the fact that there's so many. I mean, go back to Shave Fish. I mean, there's seven or eight at least <laughs> compilations of his own albums that are probably more than the albums that he actually oversaw that he made while he was alive. So that's right. <laughs> good point. Good point. Uh, Darren, you. I agree with a a lot of what uh, Andy just said. Initially, uh, it was um, news on this album was popping up on Facebook. And I told more than one person commented on more than one post that I thought it was a bogus kind of gray market release because it looks like it is. Mm. I mean, I'm with Andy with the album cover. I saw, you know, when it was finally clear, it was a legitimate release i thought that's the cover that looks like something that would come out for, from some company operating you know in uh, in ohio putting out remixed bbc recordings you know and uh, it just didn't look like something that would be pr- produced by universal or uh, something coming from the beatles i don't know something about just the color scheme i'm, I'm not familiar with the photo that's kind of cool of john with the ponytail but ultimately, as for the contents, you know, my reaction was not another compilation. There have been so many of them, but um, I will be first in line buying it. But it's, <laughs> but I do feel that, you know, listen, you had, uh, I mean, Shaved Fish, the John Lennon collection, Working Class Hero, Lennon Legend, and then Power to the People, the hits. And let's not forget that when Lennon's catalog was re-released the last time, uh, you had the box set, you had the single disc, Power to the People, the hits, yep. yeah. and you had a box set called Give Me Some Truth. Uh, yep. uh, Imagine so, John Lennon as well. Yeah, so now you have a, another Give Me Some Truth that is a two CD best of. As for remixes, as it's been pointed out, Yoko remixed all of the albums right at the turn of the century. Uh, and I found, and we've talked about this on an older show, the initial albums that came out because they were staggered over a period of several years, any differences were very, very, very subtle. Imagine came first. Then I think Plastic Ono Band was next, and you may have heard several minor things that were different than the original. By the time Walls and Bridges and Sometime in New York City came out, Yoko was really taking liberties Mm. with the mixes, which I wasn't crazy about. And of course, he basically reconfigured Sometime in New Mm. York City which I wasn't nuts about. So I was happy when they drifted out of print when they went back to the original Masters uh, a few years back, uh, and now another remix. And mm. it basically, and maybe I'm, I, I should make a note of this and not and hold this next thought for later in the show. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going <laughs> to stop right here, and I'm going to come back to this ultimate mix concept, which is how they're referring to the mixes on Give Me Some Truth coming in October, the ultimate mixes. Well, this whole ultimate mix stuff kind of really started with the Lennon um, Imagine box set in 2018, right, where they started referring to these ultimate mixes. So maybe that's just a continuation of that theme, maybe. 
Yeah, well, I'm going to, you know, what I set my point out that you guys probably may have caught already is part of what I want to discuss later in the show. So keep that. Oh, I'm going to leave it there. Ultimate mixes in a nutshell. I'll be the first in line buying. Uh, <laughs> give me some truth in October. But yeah, I'm like, you know, another compilation. Then again, it is his 80th. Maybe they feel they need to have a really nice centerpiece item for the 80th birthday for the general public. I can't see them doing Plastic Ono Band now. I mean, that's two box sets in a very short period of time. There's a book coming out that mm -hmm. deals with the Plastic Ono Band album, which makes me think they may very well still put a box set out on the heels of Give Me Some Truth. I can't see them doing that, but I guess anything's possible. So uh, I, I'm like, meh, but I'll be buying it. <laughs> well, you know, the debate on this subject could, could take up the entire show. Oh, but, um, you know, a lot of people are now saying with this coming out, then Plastic Ono Band won't come out. And I don't feel that way. And none of us have inside information about this. We've heard strong rumors about a box set for Plastic mm -hmm. Ono Band. And um, even though the Beatles box sets have revolved around anniversaries with Sgt. Pepper, the White Album and Abbey Road, the solo ones haven't. However, you know, it is the 50th anniversary of Plastic Ono Band coming up. That is in December. They probably had to do something for his birthday. How right. can you ignore his 80th birthday? You got to put out something. So um, I still believe personally, although I don't know for a fact, I still think there will be a box set for Plastic Ono Band coming out, especially like you said, Darren, that book is coming out as well. Similar to what happened with Imagine, there was a separate book for that. So I, I do think that's in the cards. But um, there's so many reasons to put out compilations, and I know what it's like for so many of us who have bought this over and over and over again. You could say that about Beatles releases, too. But um, in, the, in this particular case, because John's catalog was so small, unfortunately, you know, there's not too much to, to pull from. However, this particular set reminds me a lot of the Working Class Hero compilation, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that... That was a double CD, and it was 38 tracks, I think, altogether. And they covered all the hits, all the necessary hits, and then they went deep into right. album good. cuts. And that's what I loved about it. I would always recommend to new John Lennon fans then, get that compilation, because you're going to get the hits. You're going to get songs like Out the Blue, which you know right. I've been raving about. <laughs> you know, songs like uh, Bless You, that kind of thing. Even Intuition. having... Sure. And uh, like the the um, cheap trick version of I'm losing you is on there. It's a lot of cool stuff The the piano version of real love right. from John was on there. So it was not just the greatest hits. This is kind of the same thing to me. And they also I remember when I first heard about this, they were saying it kind of has more of a political slant. Eh, not really. No, because Every it ex excluded one of the important political songs that he's done. Uh, well, on, they, this bo on this yeah. box set. Which one? A Woman is the Nigger of the World. Okay, yeah, and they put Angela in but there. They put Angela on, on, said maybe that was their way to kind of compromise, and they, you know, by summing up his political stuff from that album, they went with Angela instead, maybe. I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know you have to have Give Peace a Chance and Power to the People in there, and they do. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a great collection of songs, and we all have our favorites, and I'm sure... Some people listening are going to say, why, is, why isn't why is a certain song in there? Not everyone's going to agree on this on the list of songs in this collection. But right. And also there's the theory of, you know, when you're on the radio and you're playing a new song from a new artist and it's blasting and the sound is all full and then you're playing a song from 40 years ago where the sound is not nearly, doesn't, burst out at you the same way hmm. the levels aren't as strong you want something that sounds comparable to what the sound is like today and i know like we're going to now talk about instant karma since that came out on record store day when you listen to that i definitely hear more drums which is a trait of you know for the longest time drums have been mixed hotter in rock songs Mm -hmm. You know, one of the big complaints about Beatle records for many years is you couldn't hear the drums as well. Nowadays, the drums are just in your face <laughs> and uh, and the bass as well. They like to mix that up hotter. And I heard that more 
I, I heard the instrumentation on Instant Karma more clearly, the, the separation of the instruments mm. in that particular mix. And maybe they feel that's, that makes it more contemporary sounding. So um, since for you, Darren, and you, Tom, Record Store Day is your biggest holiday of the year, <laughs> and you're only happier when it's expanded into two or three days a year, right. um, what are your feelings about the release of Instant Karma and what it sounds like? Darren, we'll start with you. To be honest with you, I haven't heard it yet. But it, when, it, when it came out, when, when they first announced it back at the beginning of the year, when Record Store Day was still on the calendar for April before the pandemic hit, I initially thought, I wonder what Ultimate Mixes means. But because they refer to it as, you know, the Ultimate Mixes. Uh, I thought it was just simply a straight like reissue for the 50th anniversary of Instant Karma. Maybe the angle being, you know, the first top 10 hit by a former Beatle or just a straight, you know, it's the 50th anniversary of this great John Lennon song. Let's let's do a reprint of the UK single uh, with Yoko's Who Has Seen the Wind on the flip side. Then when this Give Me Some Truth set got announced a couple of weeks back and the songs were remixed and like I said, they refer to it as ultimate mixes, then I realized that's what's going on here. Right. Um, these ultimate mixes, this was set up to be the instant karma single was set up to be a tease for something that they had planned for later in the year so uh, i mean i admit i'll admit i have not listened to uh, my 45 <clears throat> yet uh so i haven't heard i could listen i guess on uh, uh online digitally i'm not a big fan of that i feel like i won't it won't really jump out at me like it would if i actually was listening to the vinyl what they've done with this remix so you know, I'll I'll hold off on my opinions on what it might sound like. <laughs> Tom, how about you? I I think it's it's amazing sounding uh, 45. It's a very quiet 45, meaning when you when, when the needle hits the it's the vinyl. I mean, you don't hear any of that crackle or anything. I mean, it's just it's a great sounding 45. It's uh the the hype sticker uh, reads remix from the original multi tracks produced by Yoko and engineered by Paul Hicks. Uh, like you said, uh, Ken earlier that with all of these sets that we've been getting the last couple of years, you know, the bass and the drums have been, they've been coming up and it, it's, it holds true for this release as well. Do wonderful sounding and, you know, Borman's bass is, is out there. And I think it was Alan White on drums, was it? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's just a great sounding, you know, sounding record. And um, if, if the ref that the CDs and the, and, and the vinyl that's coming out uh, sounds like this, then it, I, I think people are going to, they're going to be happy with what they hear because it is an amazing uh, sounding 45. So I haven't listened to the Yoko side yet, but, um, but the instant karma is sounds fantastic. Okay. Andy, your thoughts. I didn't buy it, but I did listen to the digital uh, and I enjoyed it. I thought it was very good. Um, you know, but I didn't, I, I'm not a huge record store day guy. Typically I am, but I, I skipped out on this one. So I can't attest to the vinyl quality, but I did listen to the, the single digitally and i liked it uh very much it sounds a little bit brighter and clearer so if that's an indication of what's to come I'll, you know i'll be happy okay. well, did does anyone know if they did also remix who has seen the wind um let's see here instant karma and who has seen the, yeah it's it says um oh actually you know it doesn't say really um but it just says remixed so uh, you would have to assume that both were you would think so yeah yeah because somebody so, else also asked me that over the weekend on Facebook, mm. sent me a message and said that they remix Yoko's song, and I was like, you know what, I I, I don't know. Uh, that's a good <laughs> question. I mean, I guess I guess they didn't have to. I guess they could have, but um, I'm sure that I'm sure they did. I always thought that was one of the Yoko's better B sides. I, I always liked that song. Mm. Uh, so it's um, a very pretty song. Yeah. Yeah, when when the Yoko bashing comes out, I usually mention that, and I say, well, there's these songs that are buried on B songs that right. if you heard them, uh, you would think, oh, all right, that's 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 you know that that's not bad. And the other one, of course, is listen, the snow is falling and gorgeous song. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Or you could also mention approximately Infinite Universe. The album. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. There's Pop really. Out. You know, very melodic stuff on yes. that double album. 
But anyway, I'm I'm excited about the uh, the uh, compilation coming out. I'll be getting the two CD, debating whether or not to get the uh, deluxe one because mm. it's going to bother me if I don't get that book. <laughs> uh, you need it for the so, book. From what everything <laughs> that I've read, the book sounds like it's going to be the reason to get it. So there's deals out there to be made. You know, to find it, you just got to do a little searching. Mm-hmm. Yep. But for me, it's also going to be mainly for the remixes. Mm. Absolutely. Anyway, another news, there will be a new John Lennon tribute album coming out on his birthday, October 9th, from the folks at Gem Records called Gem Records Celebrates John Lennon with artists on their label, such as The Weaklings, The Grip Weeds, The Anderson Council, Richard Barone, The Midnight Callers, and Jonathan Pushkar. All covering John's Beatle and solo songs, this will be available on CD, vinyl, and digital. And a good friend of ours, author Ken Womack, who often is on the Talk More Talk show with us, <laughs> um, has written the liner notes for this album. And so if you're looking it up online, Gem Records is J-E-M. Gem Records celebrates John Lennon. Have Ringo, you seen the song? Yeah, I have. I had the CD right in front of me, and I've listened to the whole thing. Oh, you have it already. Yes, oh, I do. Nice. Oh, 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 you didn't get yours. Oh. <laughs> I mean, there's some great stuff in here. And uh, I'm thrilled that Richard Barone's part of it. Richard's a good friend of mine. And mm-hmm. he used to be in the Bongos. Right. New Jersey, uh, band out of Hoboken. Uh, so he does a medley of revolution and power to the people uh, mm-hmm. that I, I can't wait to hear. And uh, so that's that is that's a record that I'm really looking forward to. I know you don't have to look forward to it, Ken. You have it already, but um, I really can't wait to hear that. I bet you that's going to be a dynamite album. Like, yeah, that that medley works really well. Yeah, revolution and power of the people, and in particular, the word from the Weaklings is killer. It's a different arrangement altogether. It doesn't sound like the Beatles arrangement, but they do a great job on that. And uh, a real killer cover on there is um, the Anderson Council doing "I Found Out." Really love that. But certainly worth your while. The Weaklings also do, and this this will entice Alan Cozen. What's the new Mary Jane? Hmm. They cover that hmm. on this <laughs> CD, along with Revolution Number Nine, his two favorite Beatles songs. So uh, yes, Gem Records celebrates John Lennon coming out October 9th. None of uh, Life with the Lions is is getting covered. <laughs> no, that's going to be Volume Two. Oh, okay, very good. Very good. <laughs> Something else that uh, Tom's going to have to shell out some big money for here. <laughs> Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr has a new book out called oh. Painting is My Madness 2. That's T-O-O. It's described as a comprehensive collection of Ringo's art, inspiration, and musings. 100% of the proceeds benefits Ringo's charity, the Lotus Foundation. A first edition copy costs $95 with an embossed hardcover. And it has 192 pages. And this is where where Tom's salivating. An exclusive signed copy will sell for $695. For more information, (laughs) mere bag of shells for Tom. (laughs) Visit RingoStarArt.com. Okay. So uh, did you get the, the, um, the Super Deluxe Flaming Pie, Tom? (laughs) <laughs> Not the super duper deluxe. Okay, so that means you have some extra money for the, the sign <laughs> copy. It I'm passing on this one, believe it or not. <laughs> okay. uh, Julian Lennon is the executive producer behind a film on the solution to climate change. It is called Kiss the Ground, and it will be available on Netflix starting September 22nd. The film is narrated by Woody Harrelson and also stars David Arquette, Jason Mraz, and others. And, uh, yeah, coming out on Netflix. Sounds Mm. very interesting. On August the 21st, this is something we reported in our last show. Darren was able to get the scoop on this. There was a live streaming event to mark the birthday of the late Joe Strummer of The Clash. Uh, Gates of the West and Dark Horse Records had a two-hour concert streamed with artists that performed Joe's music. Danny Harrison was involved delivering a message. Bruce Springsteen was on the show. Bob Weir and others. This is all to benefit the cause Save Our Stages. 
which preserves and protects the USA's independent live music venues and promoters. You can watch the entire concert on YouTube under A Song for Joe, hmm. celebrating the life of Joe Strummer. And you can donate to the cause at SaveOurStages.com. Here's some news I bet you didn't know about. American country singer, songwriter, and producer Jeannie Seeley, who is now 80 years young, Mm. has just released a new album called An American Classic, in which she covers Paul McCartney's Dance Tonight on the album. And it also (laughs) features the legendary Ray Stevens on Mm. the song Dance Tonight, new cover from Jeannie Seeley. That's S-E-E-L-Y. Been in the country business a long time. Steve Lukather, the great guitarist from Toto, who's been a part of Ringo and his all-star band since 2012, has a new song out called Run To Me, and Ringo drums on it. Joseph Williams, who sang lead for Toto for many years, shared the lead vocals with Steve. You can check that out on YouTube. With special thanks to our listener, Tom Brennan, we learned that Mary Hawkin is back. Wow. With a new album, her first in seven years, and it's called Another Road. It features 10 new songs from Mary. It's being released on CD, and you can order it on her website, maryhopkin.com. There are plans of also making it available digitally. All right. Okay. There's a brand new single out by the artist T. Bear. That's the letter T. Bear, called One Day at a Time, and it's not the John Lennon song. Hmm. It was inspired by our quarantined life. And it has on the record Denny Sywell and Lawrence Juber from Wings both playing on it. A video has been made, which you can watch on YouTube. Again, that's One Day at a Time from T. Bear. Since we mentioned Ken Womack writing the liner notes on that new John Lennon tribute CD, his new book on John Lennon called John Lennon 1980, His Last Days in the Life, is due out in the U.S. on September the 15th. And uh, there's a new book coming out from both Ken Womack and Kid O'Toole. <laughs> Yay! Where does he find the time? Who knows? <laughs> you know, I just I just watched an interview with Ken, and he's working on a book on all things must pass. <sighs> and, and the Layla album coming God, out. He's not, he, just he just I never stops. He just never stops. It's it's a race between him and Bruce Spicer. Which one will put out the most books? Oh, I think right. Ken's got Bruce might have gotten the early lead on that, but Ken is certainly catching on to him now. If not, he sure is. <laughs> but uh, this new book is called Fandom and the Beatles: The Act You've Known for All These Years, coming from Oxford University Press. The date for its release is February the twenty sixth. And I just found out today, and Tom has already found out because he's about to contact the author. Right. If he hasn't already, <laughs> he's always the ahead of the game. He's always <laughs> ahead of the game here. Uh, with special thanks to the Facebook page, The Beatles in Print, Together and Solo. Yep. We learned that a new paperback book is due out October the 2nd through Amazon UK. It's called Paul McCartney, All the Songs by Rick Swan. <clears throat> Amazon says the book attempts to evaluate every track that Paul McCartney has released on a major label. Right. I think this gentleman has has done another book like this with the Beach Boys. Mm. All right. And just so everyone knows, this Facebook page is excellent. The Beatles in print together in solo. Yep. You found it about books from the past mm. you might never have known before. Right. Books coming out. So much of my news I get from from uh, from that Facebook page. Yeah, I, you should I believe, try and subscribe I, to it if you can. I believe his name is John Bazzini. Yes, it is. Yeah. He's really great at coming up with all this information. He Absolutely. must have some library at home. <laughs> Almost as big as yours, Tom. Almost. Almost. <laughs> all right, that's it for the news. Let's go on to our main topic in which we're going to talk about uh, what we'd like to see in the future from the archives of John, George, and Ringo, saving Paul and, I guess, the Beatles as well in our next show that will be on two legs. We're going to start with Ringo. And as I'm sure everyone knows, in this day and age, we've gotten so much from Paul McCartney from the archives, from all these box sets from 2010. Uh, A couple of years ago, we had the Imagine box set from John. We haven't really gotten any box sets at all from the George camp and nothing from Ringo. And 
Let's find out what your thoughts are as to what you'd like to see happen with Ringo's catalog. He now has 20 studio albums to his credit. Do you think that it's worth record companies, a record company's while to reissue them and maybe include another CD without takes, whatever? What would you like to see? And realistically, what do you think we'll see? Um, Andy, I see you're raising your hand. So why don't you try first? <laughs> okay. Um, thanks, Ken. Um, this is an interesting one because I like how you phrase it. Like, what do you think, what would, you, what would we like and what do you think ultimately would come out? And with Ringo, it's always an interesting one because his albums, as you mentioned, he's got 20 some odd albums and they're all have, they all have their merits and there's some great tracks on all of them. But realistically, if you're looking at it from a record company perspective, I think it's really only feasible to think that they're going to possibly do expanded versions of his albums would be any, everything from his first four or five albums from, you know, Buku blues up till good night Vienna. I just don't see them expanding anything past that. Now, Hey, if they ever decided to do a expanded stop and smell the roses, Hey, I'm in, that would be great. <laughs> I would, I just think in terms of a, a, a sales pitch, uh, I think that those first four or five albums are the ones that would get the treatment for this and the one the one that I, I would like to see the most obviously i mean i would say the ringo album from 73 um but i would think personally i would love a good night vienna box set out of that early period um because that's one of my favorite albums of his too but i think if we're going to get ringo deluxe treatments it's going to be from those first four or five albums uh, but like i said i would love deluxe editions of all of ringo's albums uh personally but i just don't think that's realistic but that's just that's my view and when you say deluxe, for me, it's hard to imagine beyond just the Ringo album, the classic Ringo album, mm. anything really elaborate being done beyond an right. extra disc. Yeah, like uh, I think uh, I, I think I think you can give an extra two discs. You could do two discs for, you know, the, the you know Sentimental Journey, Good Night Vienna. But if you're going to do some kind of uber deluxe box, to your point, I think that would get the Ringo album, and that's probably about it. Mm. Okay. But you would like to see, if possible, if you can get from Ringo's Rotogravure on, like, a double CD release. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially, even yeah, Bad Boy. I mean, those albums, I mean, and they're not, they didn't sell as commercially well as the stuff from his early days, but they're still terrific albums. I mean, give me a, two, give me a, a two CD expanded old wave. That would be fantastic, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, Tom, how about you? Yeah, you know, we're, as as Beatle fans and Beatle collectors, obviously we're we're never satisfied, uh, or else this show wouldn't exist right now. <laughs> but um, you know, in the apartment of being disappointed or or let down, I remember when the photograph greatest hits of Ringo's came out, and it was in two thousand seven, and and a DVD came on there with some videos. And one of the things that I would personally like to see i was hoping there would have been more videos on there because he did videos for songs like hey baby i'll still love you drowning in the sea of love uh tonight rack my brain stop and take the time to smell the roses so there's a lot of videos out there that he did that would have been really cool to see on that set now it would be cool to see if they if they could put them all on a dvd or blu-ray how realistic that is i really don't know on the realistic part of it you know, I think a Apple's 45 collection would be more realistic than anything. Um, you know, he did have the record store day uh, release with photograph. It don't come easy and it all comes down to Goodnight Vienna uh, on it. And from my uh, understanding, it did sell, it did sell pretty well. But, um, you know, to, it would be pretty cool to see a, a, a 45s box set from from Ringo. If it has to be just the Apple years, then then, then fine. But because I don't know where the rights lie for the stuff that came out after um, Good Night Vienna. Right. But, you know, and then also I would love to see, you know, Andy just said Old Wave. I mean, I know Friday Music's been uh, reissuing uh, his catalog. So, you know, to get, you know, an Old Wave from them might be cool. And then Capital, if they could release Sentimental Journey and Bukusa Blues, that would be cool as well. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's, there's quite a lot that we still want. Yeah. That we think could could realistically be done. Right. Uh, yeah. Darren, what are your thoughts? I hate to actually repeat what Andy and Tom just said, but yeah, I, I would love to see Ringo's catalog 
reissued. I think that something very large scale is highly unlikely. But I think how it could be done is the other thing actually also that may work against some comprehensive reissue is the fact that Ringo was on so many different record labels and the right. legal end of rounding all this stuff up. I have no clue what that would entail, but I would imagine it could interfere with trying to do some sort of big, grand, comprehensive set. So what I'm thinking is that what they did with, with George's uh, early solo albums, his Apple albums, do a Ringo Starr Apple box set mm-hmm. that would have the four studio albums and Blast From Your Past. I think what you could probably do is, I mean, you could do straight reissues of the CDs that are out there. Of course, remastered. I'm talking about the bonus tracks. Or take all the bonus tracks off the individual albums and put them on a fifth CD or expand Blast From Your Past to have like a, 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 a rarities disc. Mm. Uh, and whether or not uh, Universal wants to release the albums individually in addition to in a box set, I think that's very doable, is having a, a Ringo Starr Apple box set or at least see those albums get reissued. Beyond that, I think Tom mentioned Friday Music. Friday Music has been, uh, as you pointed out, uh, reissuing uh, some of the lesser uh, Ringo albums on vinyl. So there is a label out there that has access to and probably could do some some sort of multi-disc set bringing together the post-Apple years or, you know, the late 70s Atlantic stuff. That's just two albums, though. There's ways out there. I mean, we all have our uh, other artists that we like that not too many people remember or know about yet. How many times have you seen a a uh, semi-obscure artist gets some sort of deluxe reissue of some album. If it mm. could be done for some of these lesser uh, niche artists, it could be done for Ringo. I don't know if it ne- we necessarily need to have some of the recent albums re-released. Right. Um, they're out of print now. Some of them, I would imagine, might be ha- getting things like Time Takes Time back out again, or mm-hmm. some of the Mercury albums, I'm assuming, are probably not in print. Uh, that would be cool, too. But I think the obvious one and the easiest one would be an Apple box set of Ringo's uh, first four albums and Blast From Your Past. And something else that I think uh, would be fabulous would do another all-star band anthology. Yes. Um, Ringo was putting out all-star band albums pretty often. And I was always amazed when a new one would come out wondering all right, this is like the fourth or fifth or sixth (laughs) live all-star band album. I wonder how many people out there are buying them at this point. And then at one point, Ringo stopped putting them out. And one of the albums that came out was uh, called The Anthology So Far, which I believe was a triple CD. That's right. I believe. Yep. And at the point, at the year that that came out, which I don't don't recall. 92. uh, Oh, I was off. It was 2000. (laughs) Because I was just looking at well, it today. I think every artist except one was represented on that bo- on that three CD set. Am I correct there? I think that I'm not was sure Mark about. Farner but... left off, I think. I can go check but right he... now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, while you're checking at that, that was a fabulous set. And it stopped. Ringo stopped. He didn't do a second volume. Uh, he, did, he stopped releasing individual All-Star Band albums. So maybe a volume two of the anthology so far, or at least some maybe multi-disc album that documents the current lineup. When I say the current lineup, the one with Greg Raleigh and Steve Lukather right. uh, with the other guys who aren't necessarily in every one of the tours, but the Raleigh-Lukather uh, period uh, definitely should be documented on an album. And there's enough stuff there to do a double cd so that that would be those would be what i would love to see from ringo and uh, again i think an apple box or the apple albums getting reissued is a no-brainer and uh well, definitely capital, capital should happen did, yeah capital when capital was doing their 75 or 75th anniversary campaign they did release ringo and uh the goodnight vienna albums um and i was kind of 
you know, surprised they didn't release the first two, but they probably just felt, felt like the, you know, those two albums would probably be the only ones that sold. So Which those sell, are yeah. out there. And then, you know, not to, and, and not to disagree with you or anything like that, Darren, but, um, the time takes time. Was it reissued on uh, Good Night? I mean, on um, on Friday Music as well. So yes. That's no. No. Yeah. There. Yeah. But I don't. With those releases, though, sometimes they're limited. Usually pressings. Right. There may be also there may be a le- legal period of time that they can keep these things available, and then uh, it expires. I mean, it'd be interesting. I mean, even the Christmas album got re-released on vinyl. Yep. Uh, but I'm yeah. talking about some sort of like definitive re-release of these albums because i would i don't know I, i'm not even sure that like i just said i'm not sure they're still available they even the vinyl reissues but um again you get into the red tape of the legal issues and the different labels and the indie labels doing these reissues it gets a little dicey but uh, i think the apple the apple stuff that's easy mm. Uh, Darren, you are correct. There is no Mark Farner on right. this compilation here. Yeah, and I think there was it was a, I think a legal thing. I vaguely remember when it came out, the anthology. Reading an article about it, uh, it came out. I think they like. A, I mean, this is splitting hairs, but I think there's a, <laughs> the version that came out in the UK or in Europe is like got a different cover, and then it was a few months later. It finally Eagle, I believe, uh, put it out in the US. Uh, with different artwork, but there was a whole thing on everyone's here except Mark Farner. Mm. Very interesting. So those are my Ringo wishes, wish list. Okay, and uh, as for me, first of all, let me just comment on one thing, because I remember when I interviewed Chip Mattinger and Mark Easter recently uh, for my website and uh, for Every Little Thing, he talked about with Stop and Smell the Roses and Old Wave, that Ringo actually owns the masters oh, great. to the music for those two albums. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So um, I definitely would like to see, certainly up to uh, Time Takes Time, around that time, all of his albums remastered. I think that they could be cleaned up and could sound much better. There are certain albums in particular where I feel like, especially the way Bad Boy was mastered, it's it's really kind of quiet the levels you know mm. you really got to boost it up volume wise I, I think some work needs to be done there with that album but um realistically i think historically what he released on apple those first four or five years will have the most importance because they were his first releases and because they sold the best of all of his uh, catalog I don't realistically think that you're going to get something for an album like Sentimental Journey, uh, like a second disc with outtakes, uh, because every song had an arranger and probably the backing tracks were done and Mm. Ringo just cut his vocals to them. Mm. So the only thing you might have is a different vocal take. So I don't think there's really anything there with Sentimental Journey, although there is uh, a recording of Stormy Weather that wasn't released on the album, that has been bootlegged. There are supposedly outtakes of Autumn Leaves and I'll Be Seeing You, which hasn't been corroborated. You can find out everything you need to know in that book, Eight Days a Week, (laughs) with Chip Hattinger and Mark Easter of what was also recorded and what hasn't been corroborated, what's been rumored. But um, I would love to see just one CD of Sentimental Journey remastered with any bonus tracks, if possible. Eight, arm, eight, arm, eight arms to hold you, though, you mean, Ken. <laughs> what did I say? Eight days a week. <laughs> okay. Okay, from the book Figure of Eight. We have, uh, <laughs> I had to uh, do it. This is what comes from doing too many thematic sets on the radio. Right. From the book <laughs> Eight Arms to Hold You. Sorry, Chip and Mark. Anyway, uh, Buku's of Blues. We've already been given uh, the bonus tracks of Coochie yes. Coochie, the B-side. Um, of Bukus of Blues, the single, and Nashville Jam. There is another song called The Wishing Book, which has been uh, bootlegged, and it has the Jordan Errors on that song, too. Uh, that could be released with Bukus of Blues. There were several acetates from the collection of Mal Evans, which apparently, they say, eight minutes of rehearsals. Um, not the best of quality for the song Waiting, 
which doesn't have Ringo on it even singing. There's two takes of Fastest Growing Heartache in the West. I don't know if it's worth putting out. I don't know if you have outtakes from Buku's of Blues. If you do, I'd love to see a two, C, two CD set of that. Ringo, the album Ringo, deserves a box set more than any other uh, because it was his most successful. If we can get the album remastered plus one disc of outtakes or even two, maybe, maybe additional sketches from Klaus Vorman, some outtakes hmm. of his sketches of what was in the book. You put the long version of Six O'Clock on there, which I know was a bonus track on Goodnight Vienna, which made no sense. But um, <laughs> it would be nice to have that on, uh, on the Ringo box set. Something should be done because it was his most successful album and all the Beatles' involvement with it. I would love to see something there. And then we haven't even talked about anything like 5.1 mixes, which mattered to a lot of people. Would it matter to you with Ringo's releases? I don't know. Um, Good Night Vienna, I've heard there are some unreleased songs from those sessions. Could there be a remastered album and one disc of unreleased songs and outtakes? I'd love to see that. There's unreleased songs during Ringo's Rotogavure. There's a song called Party that he co-wrote with Harry Nilsson. There's also a song called Three Ships in the Harbor, which Ringo said had 43 verses in it. (laughs) And Harry Nilsson cut it down to, to 11 verses. And um, it does say in Eight Arms to Hold You that um, Ringo and Arif Martin started collecting material for the album uh, two months before the album sessions began. And the pair came up with 30 tracks to pick from. And they eventually recorded 14. So um, there is bonus material out there. I don't know how much for Ringo's Rotogravure. Again, if you can get one disc remastered, another disc with outtakes I'd be quite happy. If not, for all these albums except for Ringo, one disc remastered with bonus material would make me very happy. In some ways, the remastering is more important because it keeps the albums out there and it's of the best sound quality of the time, hopefully. Ringo the fourth, you have to add Just a Dream, which was a B-side for him. Add that to the album. If, like I said, you can get a remastered album and another of outtakes, another disc, For Bad Boy, I did say that um, it would be nice to have a DVD of the Ringo Bad Boy special, the TV special, to go with the album. And you could also add the live recordings of Heart on My Sleeve and Mm -hmm. Hard Times from that special. Add that to the audio portion of Bad Boy. Old Wave, there is one unreleased song that was mentioned in that book. That's the Kitty Lester song, Love Letters be nice if that was thrown in of course we don't know how good these other recordings are we don't even know if ringo wants to do this right but, um, that's true uh with old wave and stop and smell the roses when they they both came out on the right stuff label stop and smell the roses was great it had about five bonus tracks all together so i'd love to see that remastered old wave had a bonus track of an earlier version of um as far as we can go which was great So, um, again, if there's outtakes, put it on another disc if possible, or if you can fit it all on one disc, great. Hmm. Time Takes Time has a song called Call Me from the Jeff Lynne Sessions, and Tom Petty's on it. There's a song from the Phil Ramone Sessions called Love Is Gonna Getcha that hasn't been released, and we all know about Angel in Disguise, uh, which he co-wrote with Paul. Uh, So maybe something can come of that. Who knows if there are outtakes of any of these songs? And Vertical Man, you've got all the bonus stuff that came out from the Best Buy CD that accompanied the album. There's like three or four extra songs there. You've got for Ringo Rama, there was a deluxe edition with a few extra songs. You can reissue those. But like I said, once you're getting into the 90s, the sound quality was really great. I don't know how much more you can improve on those. But anything from, say, Time Takes Time and earlier, I'd love to just get those remastered. And... You were saying, Darren, about the All-Star Band. There should be a more comprehensive collection because the one that you mentioned so far is from 20 years ago. There's another 20 years of touring there. All these other bands that Ringo has assembled put together, I don't know, four or five CDs and have something to represent all the different band members. And for that matter, why not have a DVD of a collection of all these different bands? I think Mm -hmm. a lot of people who have never seen Ringo live would be astounded to to know all the different people that have been in his lineups. And they are great, 
great performances and it's just it's great to watch on screen to see all these different artists come together on the same on the same stage and perform so well so i think yeah. that's like a missed opportunity too yeah it's interesting how they stop or any release even individual live albums from one tour or dvds from one specific tour the way they just cut off and stopped like ringo lost interest in releasing them or perhaps he flooded the market early on putting mm. out so many that uh the more recent tours more recent years have uh been been ignored and overlooked now's the time he could do something about that yep that's true so that's it for ringo i think we covered it all for george why don't we start with you darren all right george is is uh george in my book is pretty easy i don't think well no i it's not that i don't think i know there hasn't been an accurate complete best of george harrison compilation thank you thank um you. ever best, <laughs> yeah no right you're right best of george harrison i mean if it was a friend of yours is mixtape the best george harrison was fine as an album to come out from Capitol records in 76 it's an embarrassment and an insult to mm. george you essentially get on an album called the best of george harrison you get six songs half an album and the other half are beatle tunes which are great obviously but this is supposed to be the best george harrison and then the best of dark horse was a great compilation that basically just focused in on one period in George's career is Dark Horse stuff. And I was never thrilled about uh, Let It Roll as a compilation, uh, mm. as collecting uh, the best of, although it kind of plays like that wasn't their goal with that album to put out a best of. So I would love to see at least two CDs. I don't know if, they, if, if any label would ever stretch it to three, but at least two CDs, and then maybe like they did with Pure McCartney, they could do a, a deluxe best of that adds an extra disc for the hardcore fans. But mm -hmm. at least for the general public, no less than no fewer than two CDs of the best of George Harris. All the hits, all the key album tracks, whether from Apple or from Dark Horse. So say like if a well, song like uh, Shanghai Surprise that was released but didn't chart, you would still want that on there. Well, yeah, absolutely. If it's if it's if it's a non album track that got released, it's put it in there with the hits. That's nothing new. Uh, greatest Hits albums have been doing that for ages. They've been doing that, adding little, you know, little sweeteners amongst mm -hmm. the commonly known hits. And if you want to expand it to a third disc, dig a little deeper to key album tracks. Something like, for example, maybe, uh, well, that was a single, Faster, I was going to say. That was a single overseas. But something like Beautiful Girl. Uh, yeah. Should have been a number one hit, but never came out as a single. Would be a perfect deep album cut to put on a career-spanning best of of George Harrison's. I think it's it's a huge void, and um, I wouldn't be shocked if one day that does happen. But uh, it should have happened already. And another thing that maybe if you want to keep the best of compilation as a separate release, um, we've talked about this on things we said today. How bizarre. That early takes volume one album is sitting out there <laughs> all by its lonesome. Yeah. Mm. Handful of tracks. There was so much room on that CD to put more things on there. And they teased this with the volume one in the title. There's been mm. no volume two. Don't know if they ever planned on a volume two, but maybe kind of let early takes volume one kind of fall to the wayside for the collectors and put out the big mama early takes uh, <laughs> anthology of unreleased outtakes demos all of the beware of apco stuff all on a separate multi-disc set i think you'll have people snapping that up uh, maybe even as much as they'd snap up a best of george harrison uh mm. and they could do those as two separate releases or combine them because there's always people like like the four of us that'll go out there and and buy uh you know 85 right. disc set that comes with the leather bound Corinthian leather book and whatnot. <laughs> uh, but th I think those are two very right down the middle, obvious voids mm -hmm. in Harrison catalog. Those, 
two types of anthologies. And then uh, I think that I'd, I'd listen, I'd be happy for a long time if those ever did come out. The rumors were we were getting an All Things Must Pass box set later this year. Right. Uh, maybe, you know, who knows? But his albums, especially All Things Must Pass, even if you want to single out the, the uh, iconic albums, Cloud Nine, maybe Living in the Material World, those albums deserve maybe the kind of treatment that All Things Must Pass got back in 2000. Uh, some sort of revised All Things Must Pass set and then a multi-disc set looking at uh, Cloud Nine and, uh, and, and Living in the Material World. And maybe if you want to include you know, I don't know, combine a couple of the Dark Horse albums, but uh, hmm. but mainly a, a, a super duper deluxe best of George Harrison and uh, complete early takes would be number one and number two for me, or 1A and 1B. Yeah. I, I remember being so disappointed when I got the best of Dark Horse and Faster and this song were not on that compilation. Mm. Mm. Especially oh, this yeah. song. Yeah, especially oh, yeah. this song, yes. I forgot yeah. about that. Right, right. That right. was his first single on Dark Horse. Yep. Was this right. Song. But you and had three, you had you had three new songs on that compilation, which was pretty generous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true, true. You know, and then the fact that then when you got Let Me Roll It, then they did add um, I Don't Want to Do It on on there, which I think that was says the first time that was released on CD. So that was a nice addition to that. But yeah, I, I think Let Me Roll It was a little disappointing as well but i you know if you i think the a, a great idea would be like a, a pure mccartney style you know best of greatest hits for for george harrison would be a good idea darren absolutely you yeah let it roll. Also, yeah let it you roll. mentioned yeah let it uh, let it roll you meant tom uh, yeah thank you yeah <laughs> um there's also um cockamamie business and poor little and, girl Poor yep. little girl. Yeah. Uh, the new songs that were on Best of Dark Horse that and are Cheer now. Down, Cheer Down too. Well, yep. yeah, well, Cheer Down got a little more attention because it came out as a single, right. and but those other two songs only popped up on Best of Dark Horse. That album went on a print, never got mm -hmm. reissued. Those two songs are lost uh, right. right now, and I think there's two mixes of I Don't Want to Do It. And I've, <clears throat> yes, I've there never are. There are. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've never A B'd the actual soundtrack album with the single. I think that the but the mixes are different from what was on the Porky's Revenge soundtrack album and what came out on the single. They they little things like that could be tended to mm -hmm. uh in, in, in a in a rarity set. Okay. Yeah. Tom, your thoughts about George? Um, well, I want to sound like a broken record on one particular thing, and that's like an Apple's 45 collection. Um, I think with all of these reissues of the albums, I think it, it makes sense that you release a lot of these on 45s because there are a lot of non-album uh, B-sides that aren't getting any attention on vinyl, which I would like to see that change. Uh, we, we all know that, you know, we got Miss Odell, I Don't Care, uh, and a couple others that were on 45s that... Um, you know, didn't they had to haven't seen any vinyl play at all. So I I would like that. Uh, we we know that the concert for, for Bangladesh is coming via via what the Harrison Camp has has said in that Rolling Stone interview. Uh, however, I would like to see if that does come out. I would like to see that upgraded to to Blu-ray, which we did get the DVD uh, a few years back, and um, of course on vinyl. And do do we know if the the ever uh, video record the live in Japan stuff, or was it just only on soundboard? No, there's video of that. So a there's little video. bit. Yeah, there's but so video the whole thing. Of, is my from what question. I was told, the, an entire concert was not filmed, just select okay. songs okay. professionally. Right. And I think it's a shame that that didn't get recorded professionally, the whole thing, because that would have been, a, I think, a nice release or a nice companion to go with the, with the, the vinyl. Sure. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Andy? Interesting, you know, great choices so far. And, you know, for me, I don't know how, again, this is just purely, you know, I, I want it. I don't know how <laughs> realistic it is, but I really, really want an expanded remixed package of the Dark Horse album because obviously his voice is just, you know, so shot on it. But I think it was remixed and repackaged with some lost footage from the 74 tour that you know is floating out there. That would be a really, really cool box set. A, because it was the beginning of his label, 
and you know, and he was so, uh, you know, he was so ingrained, you know, and wanting to start his own label up. And even though it was a little bit of a period of um, chaos for his career and personal life uh, at that time, I, I think that a, a box set of the Dark Horse album and accompanying tour, uh, his only tour of North America, needed to needs to be repackaged and put out there in a in a kind of I wouldn't say super duper deluxe box set, but maybe an expanded two or three CD type set, you know, along the lines of the 2001 All Things Must Pass set. Like nothing, not in a crazy, you know, McCartney, you know, $250 box, but something <laughs> that, that, in, that remixes that album, you know, brightens it up a little bit more vocally. And also, if, if there's no video footage, maybe a soundboard recording of one of those shows from the 74 tour. Just, just to have that out there, because, again, it was, a, it was his only solo U.S. tour. George's material is so scattered, you know, like, you know, he came out of the game out of the gates blazing and then took it a little bit off and then picked it back up again in the late seventies before really kind of disappearing there in the early eighties and then really not coming back again until cloud nine. So the, the, the dark horse box would be something that I would love to see. And I think also Darren pointed out on it too. Another album, I think with what's worthy of box set treatment is cloud nine because of uh, what it meant to his career at that point, coming back, everybody involved with that record, Elton John, you know, Jeff Lynn, everybody, the videos, the accompanying videos, like if that album, that that's a record that I do feel could stand alone on its own to get uh, a serious archive release along the lines of the, the Ringo album, as you mentioned, Ken. Mm. Okay. Well, first of all, I do remember, and I brought this up several times, that earlier this year in Rolling Stone, there was an interview with uh, Olivia Harrison and Danny Harrison around the time when the uh, Dark Horse label had signed a distribution deal with BMG. And they're talking about all things must pass coming out, you know, a, a reissue of it and the concert for Bangladesh. They're going to do something for that, living in the material world and even the 74 tour. I don't believe that Olivia and Danny would say that unless there are really plans for that. So um, I would like to see something really nice done for All Things Must Pass, including the demos of Beware of Apco. If you can include a disc of alternate takes, I'm not sure. I've heard different stories about this. If it's possible to hear the songs without the Phil Spector production with right. today's technology, I don't know if you can take that away. And that is not a reflection of what I think of Phil Spector's production. I think it was perfect for that album for that time, especially. Those songs work so well with what Phil Spector did. It was a masterful job. I applaud Phil Spector for what he did with All Things Must Pass. But in this day and age, in this stripped down age, hmm. people like to hear songs stripped down, like Double Fantasy stripped down, or hearing demos and early versions of songs. It would be very interesting to hear All Things Must Pass that way. Okay, so I think... All Things Must Pass really warrants that. The concert for Bangladesh, it came out on DVD, uh, what was it, 10 years ago with bonus material, rehearsal yep. footage, uh, you know, George and Bob Dylan working on If Not For You, uh, Come On In My Kitchen with Leon Russell and all that. Maybe they can reissue that with more rehearsal footage. And maybe, maybe there can be something either audio-wise or video-wise from the afternoon show. They did perform Hear Me Lord in the afternoon show, and that's never come out. Would be nice to have that as a live recording if it was done professionally. I don't know for sure if it was, but I'd like to see something done for that. I happen to feel the same way about George's catalog as I do Paul's catalog and John's catalog, and that I feel like because of their historical importance and also because I do personally feel that the quality of their albums is consistently good. Even you, Darren, said you think George's catalog is the most consistently strong. I, I, um, I, I, yeah. Definitely. I think George is pound for pound. Every album, uh, even his weaker ones, uh, are solid. And he has the best catalog of the four of them. Wow. Most consistent. Okay. Well, that's, that's Darren's opinion. And I definitely feel he's been consistently strong. But I wish attention would be given to all of his studio albums. I'm not expecting... The same thing like what McCartney's doing with his catalog. But it would be nice to have every album remastered and an extra disc of outtakes, if they exist, or demos for all of them. 
really. And for the 1974 tour, there should be a DVD Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. And since since Olivia and Danny in that article brought up the Dark Horse tour, I yep. am expecting it. Yeah, maybe it will be on the 50th anniversary. I don't know. You know, if you're going to time everything that way, it would be nice. And since we're never going to have really a full, complete concert of the 1991 Japanese tour with Eric Clapton, this is all we got as far as the full concert and the concert for Bangladesh. So it's kind of like what I've said many times about John. The live performances are so scarce mm. that you they really have to treasure there. them. Yeah. yeah. So historically, for its importance there, regardless of what anyone says, good or bad, about George's voice, because of its historical importance, doesn't mean the Harrison family has to feel that way, but at least they are talking about it. And um, so I feel that way about the rest of George's catalog. I'd love to see 33 and a third remastered yeah. bonus CD. Same thing through, um, you know, Brainwashed and uh, Cloud Nine, definitely. You know, when we did our show on Talk More Talk, Tom, yep. a while ago on Cloud Nine, we had one person right in saying i'd love to hear the album without the jeff lynn production <laughs> right <laughs> remember so that yeah. that just proves my point the same thing with phil specter what would cloud nine sound like a little more bare a little more right. stripped down mm -hmm. so i think if you could do something like that that would be very interesting and i never say no to demos and early versions of songs right. okay so that's kind of like what i would like to see with um with uh george's catalog yeah and if you can get booklets <laughs> in, with all the, the CD reissues or vinyl reissues with notes from the musicians that worked on them, if right. they're still alive, that would be nice too. Okay. Yeah, I love the, all of these, you know, the, the interviews with, the, with the, the musicians that played on these tracks. I mean, it would be great to get, you know, their take on, you know, their thoughts on these songs that they played on. You know, I, I think it would be really important uh, to hear what they have to say. You know, just not the Harrison camp, but the, all the musicians, because he worked with so many great musicians throughout his solo career. I mean, let's hear what yeah. they have to say about those songs as well. Yeah, like in the Flaming Pie box set. Yep, in the, exactly. in the book itself, there's a lot of great quotes from Steve Miller. Yes. You know, working with, with Paul McCartney and uh, right. a few from Jeff Lynne yep. as well. You want to hear their take on what it was like to work with Paul on that album. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely feel, and I can say the same thing about John, as I will, <laughs> when I talk about his catalog, but right. I'm going to move on to him and let you guys talk about it. Um, so as far as what remains of John's catalog, what would you like to see happen in the future? This time we'll start with uh, Tom. Okay, thank you, Ken. Uh, right off the bat, I think the one album of his that doesn't get any, you know, that hasn't gotten any kind of remastered or, or you know, updated treatment, I think it's, it's uh, Men Love Avenue. Um, I would like to see a uh, updated, you know, remaster or any improved work on that for a vinyl CD release. You know, another thing I would love to see. There's a lot of great period piece interview or uh, documentaries on John Lennon. I know we got the Imagine John Lennon, but it deals a lot with his, you know, Beatles career. It doesn't really go a lot in his solo career. I would love to see an anthology style documentary on John Lennon. Where it, you know either you, you go year by year and you you add a lot of the short films that him and John or him and uh, Yoko Ono worked on, get a lot of the you know music that uh, they worked on together, experimental stuff or whatever it is. I just uh, a, a true honest documentary that could be four or five hours long. I'll I'll pay for it. I don't care <laughs> how long it is. <laughs> but um, but if we don't get anything like that in the future, I would love to see a, you know an updated Blu-ray release of Imagine John Lennon. Um, it, it's a fine documentary. Uh, you know, I know we've got the Imagine, you know, um, uh, Blu-ray that came out, was it last year? And, you know, a lot of people talk about that period in time of, of his life. But let's get something that talks about his whole, you know, that whole 70s. Or you can start it in 68 or even better, you can start it when he met Yoko, if you want to. And mm -hmm. just cover, you know, that from that moment on up until, up until his death, really. And then the impact that he had on, you know... You know the musicians, or you know the 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 music world and, and the fans and whatnot. So that's something I would like to see. Um, again, you know, in another 45s collection, there's a lot. Again, still a lot of um, 45s that um, that weren't album tracks. Besides, you know, from Yoko that weren't on album or vinyl that I'd like to see 
excuse me, released on, on 45s or vinyl or whatnot, if, whether or not you want to do the whole, you know, his whole career or, or an Apple box set with just the, the Apple years on it. Either way, uh, there's a lot of, you know, great stuff on there that hasn't, um, you know, seen a lot of, you know, vinyl love. So I'd like to see that. So, so yeah, I mean, th- I mean, I think this stuff is slowly starting to come out. You know, I think um, uh, hopefully, you know, Sean in the future will, will get more involved with the stuff and, and start releasing, you know, more and more stuff that might be out there of John. But uh, for now, I think uh, they're doing an okay job. But let's get these box sets out, you know. I, want, I really want that Plastic Ono, bo- Plastic ono uh, band box set and, um, you know, get the tracks on, on there and see what if there's ev- any evolution of those songs like we, we got on the Imagine box set. So that's uh, really important to me, you know, hearing... Anything that might be different or, you know, if there's an, the lyrics changed or whatnot that we, you know, that we've been witnessing with these box sets. So, uh, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll continue. Now, will, he, will, will Yoko continue with like stuff like, you know, Walls and Bridges and or Mind Games where she wasn't really that involved with? You know, who knows? But um, it's, an, it's important music and, and they, should be, um, they should be treated as such. Mm. Agreed. Mm. No argument there. <laughs> Andy, how about you? Uh, much like Tom said, you know, for a man who is so revered, I'm amazed when I meet people who are kind of know the Beatles but don't really know the Beatles or John, and they can only name like you know they call themselves Beatle fans or Leonard fans, and they can only name five songs. You know, for a man who has such a limited output of music of his own, I'm amazed at how little people know of his music outside of the hits. We're not talking about 50 albums of music to listen to here, like McCartney, okay? You've got, you know, seven or eight albums in the main sequence. I'm not talking the experimental stuff. So the fact that there is such a little little, little bit, uh, such a few amount of albums that John Lennon recorded, I think, as Tom pointed out, every one of them, again, the proper albums, deserve to, to get what the Imagine set was uh, released as it was, you know, in 2018. The elements, the, the mixes, every one of his albums deserves that treatment, in my opinion, for, for a man who it will be gone 40 years this December, would have been 80 this October. There is no excuse why eventually all his albums should not be given that treatment. Uh, and, you know, we've talked about how the anniversary of Plastic Ono Band is this year. Clearly, the anniversary thing is not something that they were going with because we got Imagine in 2018. So uh, the next one that was going to come out, if it wasn't Plastic Ono Band for me, I would love to see, you know, a ultimate mind game set with the elements of mixes and just presented in the same way that the Imagine one was. And I know Tom said, well, you know, Vyoka wasn't really around then. She wasn't, but clearly, you know, she has access to all this stuff and her pe- and her team does. So if they treat it with the same level of care and respect and love that they gave to the Imagine set, there's no reason why a whole new generation of fans couldn't discover this music and realize what they've been missing out on and music that has been around for 40 plus years now. Mm. I'm sending Andy a virtual hug right now, just so everyone (laughs) knows what he said, especially since uh, you all know that Mind Games is my favorite Lennon album. But um, yeah, very good, Andy. Darren, your thoughts? We've been hearing that this release will be coming at some point. So I'm putting it on the top of my list is a redo of Live in New York City. Mm -hmm. Uh, The 1972 one-to-one concert, a complete or as complete as possible of uh, that concert, including Yoko with uh, the Plastic Ono Elephants Memory Band, all of John's stuff. Uh, I don't know, expanded even to include some of the other artists that were part of it. Uh, that would be fabulous. But even if it's just John and Yoko, Jack Douglas has talked about, well, not recently, but has in the past talked about it being on the uh, on the uh, agenda to remaster and uh, really fix up what we have in the form of the Live in New York City album and expand it perhaps to be the entire concert from the Garden in 1972. Now, that brings me to uh, what I was talking about with Ultimate Mixes earlier. And now, of course, that I'm trying to find something here. Uh, I think it's come together. You guys could, could, could help me here. There is on the Give Me Some Truth 
uh, best of that's coming out in October, there's going to be, I think, at least one song from that one to one concert from the Live in New York City album. Mm -hmm. And that's I know come together on there. Right. Yeah, it's come together almost positive. Yeah. I could see it here on the uh, photograph of uh, the album art. But uh, one thing that I read referred to referred to it as an ultimate mix. And that made me think, wait a minute. They didn't just do an ultimate mix of that one song come together. So I'm sure that it, it comes from uh, the full album slash concert. Uh, so maybe we're not all that far away from seeing uh, Live in New York City upgraded. If you, you understand what I'm saying, the yeah, fact mm -hmm. that the song is on Give Me Some Truth as in one of the ultimate mixes, then therefore probably everything else has been worked on already and maybe even completed so getting an upgrade of live in new york city is at the top of my list uh the thing that's hard for me with john uh, you know i could i could say we want to get a plastic on event box set which we think is going to happen and mind games box set uh and i think that that might be happening i think imagine started that last year when imagine came out as a set what's hard with john is there have been so many reissues already and a lot of them were good, but they could have been better. Albums, for example, like Men Love Avenue or Acoustic, you could expand on them now. Why mm. not actually gather all of this material into a second anthology box set? Oh. Uh, you know, like the one that was done over 20, well, 20, 25 years. 19, 1998. 98, all right. That was the year my daughter was born. 21 years ago. And you were in line while she was uh, being born, getting that John Lennon box set, weren't you? <laughs> we're trying to forget talking about that here in the <laughs> Um Actually, the one thing that came up just to completely change the subject was uh, me going to Beetle Fest in 2003, uh, the day after. My daughter had major hip surgery when she was three years old. She had an infection oh. in the bone. She was in the hospital for two weeks. She was in a body cast for a month and a half. And the day after they cut her out of her body cast, I went to Beetle Fest, and I'm still hearing about it. Uh, <laughs> this day. In fact, the retaliation was that lifting her wheelchair that day out of the back of uh, the my, the back of my car, the, the trunk. That's what they call the back of the car. The trunk. <laughs> Trying to get her wheelchair out of the trunk. I blew a hernia, which I didn't even know I had. And I had emergency hernia surgery five days later. So that's what I got for going to Beetle Fest. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, yeah, so Live in New York City would be my first pick. And I would like to see them do another anthology type set of John's. You know, the Lost Lennon tapes. It seems like a lifetime ago that radio show uh, mm -hmm. was happening. And I know that anthology was just a drop in the bucket, the John Lennon anthology box of what exists. So, you know, maybe it's time for another multi-disc box set of demos and unreleased stuff and whatnot. Even if some of the materials repeated uh, that was on the first anthology, but repeated with other material as well. Uh, that would be fabulous. Mm. Those would be my two for Lennon. Okay. Uh, my thoughts are pretty much uh, simpatico with yours, Darren, and yours, Andy. Um, I'd like to see all of John's studio albums released as box sets with using Imagine as the template, because Imagine was so perfect the way it was done. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't say enough about how that was handled a couple of years ago and do the same thing with Plastic on All Bands, Sometime in New York City, Mind Games, Walls and Bridges, Rock and Roll. Okay? The whole idea of stripped down, well, you can't get more stripped down than Plastic on All Band. <laughs> but uh, you can have alternate takes, you know. And even if sometimes it gets confusing, if a take that you heard might have been the same one that was the on the anthology, it doesn't matter. I still enjoy it anyway. Um, there's so much you can do with these box sets. And... Um, Double Fantasy and Milk and Honey, you can do the same thing. I'm not one of those people that believes in putting all of John's songs in one collection and separating Yoko's. They were conceived that way together, and that's the way that you know I feel we should be listening to it because that's the way they wanted it. But um, 
you know, if you could do anything more. It's kind of tough to know because Stripped Down already came out. But if you could do something with alternate takes of songs from Double Fantasy and Milk and Honey, I would love that. The one-to-one concert, like you said, Darren, Jack Douglas is working on something. A few years ago when I interviewed him, he said the main problem is with the video. I don't know if that's all been cleared up since then. I'd like to see something that combines both the afternoon and evening show for audio and video. There were also rehearsals for the one-to-one concert. And I'd love to hear stuff from that officially. A lot of this stuff has been bootlegged already. Be nice for that to come out. That could be timed or or packaged maybe with some time in New York City because it's all the same time anyway, really. You know, as far as um, the material and the political period and all, maybe that might work well. I'd like to see a compilation of live cuts from uh, TV shows or special events like uh, Dick Cavett, Mike Douglas, uh, the tribute to Sir Lou Grade, um, Imagine Live at the Apollo, which I know has been released, the John Sinclair Benefit Rally. This has been bootlegged and packaged this way. I'd like to see it like uh, as an official release. The David Frost Show, the Attica State Benefit, and you're repeating a lot of these songs too, but... Just like we said with George Harrison, the number of concerts that John gave were scarce. And some of these are just a few songs anyway. They're not full concerts. Only the one-to-one concert was. And then, as Darren was talking about the Lost Lennon tapes, my God, there's so much material from, Mm. from that show. I would love for there to be a collection of just the songs from the last five years of John's life that he didn't release. Right. That he did on just acoustic guitar or piano. And there's plenty of songs like that, like Sally and Billy and uh, oh, Whatever sure. Happened To and those songs and put them on some kind of a collection. Again, this could also be part of a box set or another anthology if you want to. But, you know, if you're familiar with the radio series, what a treasure trove that was. I've often yeah. said it's the greatest gift Yoko's ever given of John's material, stretched out over four years on the radio. And uh, there's so much good stuff. Hey That's Ken, do you there. do you know do you know Ken if the if Westwood One still retains the right to that to that show and those recordings? Well, I would think that the recordings have to be owned by John or the record company, Universal. Because those were so well done. I mean, I was only a child at the time, but I was even listening to it then, and I'm, it was amazing. And it would just be so cool if the even the you had mentioned the songs from the pro, from the broadcast, but if those broadcasts could be released as they were presented with Elliot Mintz ta- introing them and stuff, that would be uh-huh. just a, a tremendous release too. Well, it is four years worth of radio shows. That would be a pretty big uh, collection there. <laughs> hey, Dylan but, uh, does it. Dylan does it, so come on. <laughs> well, I would think Westwood One owns the rights to the radio series and, and Yoko owns the rights to all the to the music, yeah. a, a, along with Universal. Right. So, um, you know, there are bootlegs that are out there that I love to listen to of just John on acoustic guitar and nothing else doing certain songs. There's also the same thing of just John on the piano alone, nobody else doing certain songs. Those would make great collections, either as single discs or being part of a box set, you know? And all you got to do is know the material from the Lost Lennon tapes, and there's a lot of material there that fits that description. Mm -hmm. So there's so much that you can do there in whatever form you want to put it out, whether they're single albums or CDs or box sets. I think there's a lot you can do still with, you know, considering the fact that John's catalog is so small, unfortunately, he made a lot of recordings, thankfully, a lot of home recordings, and we still have those to listen to, and I treasure them. I really do. You know, this whole idea that, uh, you know, some books will say that John lost his muse the last five years of his life, and then all of a sudden he got an inspiration in 1980 and started writing songs. He was still writing songs those last five years. Free as a Bird is from that period. Real Love is from that period. So it would be nice to see some kind of collection. If you want to separate acoustic guitar and piano, I would love that personally. But just to show that John was still, you know, productive as far as his songwriting. Uh, I'd like to see all that come out. So there's still plenty there you can do with John. All right. So, um... One last question I want to ask you guys is that, you know, you talk about the John Lennon anthology, which I loved. And for years, Paul McCartney has talked about his cold cuts collection and 
that being B-sides and songs he didn't release. And you've heard rumors there'd be a box set of McCartney stuff that's all unreleased. Would you rather see a box set come out with that, or would you rather it be spread out on each album from the time period from which those recordings were made? Because that's, that's what McCartney is doing on his right. archival box sets. We're not getting a cold cut. Right. You know, if you want any of these B-sides, you have to get it on the albums from which it was that period, that uh, musical I, period. Yeah, I, I tend to think uh, one big box housing all of that stuff would be better than than trinkling it out a, across the albums. I think it makes for a better a better package to just say, okay, here's all the here's all the demos and the outtakes and the, the rare stuff. I, you know, that would be that's that, to me that's much more appealing. I I kind of disagree a little bit. I kind of like the way that the Dylan Camp has been releasing, uh, you know, his uh, you know bootleg series. And, you know, going in, you know, different directions with every release, you know, kind of like with Dylan, you know, you're going, you know, 67, 68 one year, or then the next time you're going, you know, 70, 72, and just releasing songs right right around that period. And I think, you know, you get those, you know, that five-year period or four-year period like you were talking about, uh, Ken, I think that would, you know, definitely make like a, a, you know, nice set just for that. But I would like to see that expanded, you know, throughout his whole career. I mean, if we don't get it on these, you know, box sets like Imagine, if they don't continue that series, it would be nice to see that that stuff continue and and present it like a Lost on M tapes, where you're you're getting maybe put it in chronolo- chronological order and you know dealing with maybe two or three discs, you know, dealing say with you know the sessions for Plastic Ono Band or or Mind Games or whatnot, and then maybe present it like that instead of one big uh, package. Uh, because you know, I mean, you know, one of the complaints lately about these sets are, you know, how much they are, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's so many ways of looking at this catalog. Right. Darren, how do you feel about that? Uh, I think for convenience' sake, it would be nice to have everything in one place. But I mean, I don't really realistically think that will ever happen. I think the way Paul's doing it is the way he's, you know, the way he's doing it with the, with these with these tracks. I think Cole Cuts was a ship that sales you know yeah. right express you know it was something that was that should have happened then and it's it's gone now uh I, without without really get actually no i'm going to stop with my next statement because that's going to take us into our next show which is when we're talking about because <laughs> uh, i think that there's something else that's so obvious that needs to come out from paul but yeah, I'd lo- I'd love to see all the you know the B sides, outtakes, rarities, demos, all that good stuff in one place. But you know, it's it's fine the way he's doing it now. Okay, I like the way you left that hanging, Darren. <laughs> Leave it as a, a teaser. teaser. That's right. See a little teaser for the next show. Now, if I understand this correctly, and I confuse easily, as everyone should know by now, <laughs> this is things we said today. With Tom and Andy from Two Legs. Right. Our next show is going to be Two Legs with Ken and Darren from Things We Said Today. And as a result of that, it's going to be a video cast. Right. Correct. Correct. Bingo. Okay. Well, I got to write down be sure to shower and shave <laughs> in two weeks. Oh, uh, you did okay. fine the first time, Darren. Don't yeah. worry. You, you're you a pro. Kind of, that's the. Yeah, That's the fine. last time I showered and shaved. So. <laughs> mm. Darren, you, you can't do these shows in your underwear anymore. That's why I. That's why I. Uh, I work at radio. You know, and now that I'm doing all all broadcasting is being done from my home. <laughs> you would hate to see what I look like while I'm. No, I'm kidding. No, actually, I'm not. But anyway, so th- so I understand what we're doing uh, for our next show, and it will involve McCartney folks so there okay Indeed. Well, this has been uh, a great discussion and uh we will as darren just said cover mccartney and probably the beatles group stuff too in the two legs broadcast but right now let's go around the the uh, imaginary table that we have in front of us and get uh, contact information for each of us here and we'll start with andy well, you can re- if you want to reach me, you can just reach me at my email at andynichols.com or um, my Facebook page or also on the Two Legs page uh, on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we're on there as well, Two Legs, Paul McCartney Cop Podcast, and you can find us on there. Okay. And, Tom, why don't you explain to everyone how Two Legs goes out, 
how often it uh, a new show happens and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Absolutely. Well, two legs these days uh, is is uh, somewhat weekly, or we, or I should say, we try to be a weekly show. You know, minus any hurricanes that might uh, pop through and then ruin our schedule. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, leaving leaving flaming pie, you know, to be unopened because yeah. a hurricane came through. I know Darren went through that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So as of at the moment, we are a weekly video cast slash podcast. You can check us out on our YouTube channel, like Andy said, Two Legs a Paul McCartney podcast. We are also just about every audio outlet or or or, or um you know outlet for podcasting, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify. There's a the Amazon now, so we are everywhere. Any platform you can think of, we're we're there, and yeah, we're we are weekly for the moment, and hopefully we'll we'll stay that for a while. But you know, if if Andy's uh you know work situation you know gets busy, then we you know we obviously we were two weeks at for a while, but but we're weekly for now, and um you know we're getting great responses from from our fans, great comments, and um you know they let us know when we screw up as well, and that's great too. <laughs> You know, we gotta appreciate that. Constructive criticism, criticism is always a good thing. But uh, but yeah, we're everywhere. Um, for myself, you know, Tom Hunyadi, I'm on Facebook, um, on Instagram as well. Two Legs is on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Two Legs Podcast. So we're just about everywhere, uh, all the platforms. So we're easy to find. Yeah, and um, as I've said on Talk More Talk and even in this show, your show is just getting better and better. Well, thank Tom you, and Andy. Thank and you. you're Absolutely. constantly you're coming up with so many guests. I can't <laughs> keep track of it all. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's been amazing that the whole guest aspect, you know, starting off with Kittle Tool, and you know, we've pro- I've probably in you know in the three or four years that we've been doing this show, uh, maybe only have gotten two people that denied coming on. So you know, it's been uh, I've been very lucky in the guest uh, air department. So mm-hmm. okay, uh, Darren. People want to yes. get in touch with you. They can do so. How? Uh, go to Facebook. <laughs> I have two Facebook pages. <laughs> um, somebody recently asked me, "Why do you have two Facebook pages?" And I was like, "You know, I don't know why." Uh, in a perfect world, many, many, many years ago, uh, when I was new to Facebook, there was Darren DeVivo, and then somebody I went to high school with, who I didn't even know knew that I was still alive, was listening to me on WFUV <laughs> and started the Darren DeVivo fan club. On wow, Facebook, look, at, look at you. Which was a mind blower when one day I see this thing and who actually launched the page. I'm like, oh, my God, we haven't spoken in years. <laughs> but anyway, so those two pages are out there. But now one is Darren DeVivo. The other is a little more wordier name. Uh, involving WFUV. You can like that page and send me a friend request. Eventually, I'm going to try to keep the two pages separate with individual content rather than double posts. You can email me at WFUV. Uh, the email address is Darren DeVivo, spelled out. Uh, I think you can just do D DeVivo as well at WFUV.org. And if you want to listen, WFUV is in New York City. Tri-State Air, you can pick us up at 90.7 FM. If you're one of the three or four people that still listen to HD radio, we're 90.7 <laughs> FM HD2. And you can stream us at WFUV.org or listen on our app. I could even tell your smart speaker, however those things work, to play WFUV and listen to us there. And you can catch me at the moment, Monday through Thursday nights, 10 p.m. to midnight, although normally we would go to 2 a.m., but the pandemic kind of screwed things up on our end. Saturday afternoons, 1 to 4 p.m. on WFUV. That's it. (laughs) All right. As for our show, uh, we have two Facebook pages, Things We Said Today and Things We Said Today Radio Fans. We also have an email address, Things We Said Today Radio Show at gmail.com. As for me, Ken Michaels, you can reach me at my email address at everylittlething at att.net. I also have a Facebook page for Ken Michaels. I want to remind everybody that I have my uh, website, kenmichaelsradio.com, and I have Beatles Trivia every single week where you can win one of ten prizes. And now I have a new prize, not necessarily a new book, but it has just been issued in the United States called End in the End. Oh, yeah, great. 
Yeah, by Ken McNabb, who I interviewed recently, and we had here on Things We Said Today, as a matter of fact. And it's all about the year 1969, and Ken takes you through month by month all the Beatles activities, group and solo, all their internal problems, what's going on with the marriages with Paul and Linda and John and Yoko, and, and it's explained so well. And I, I, I'm being very sincere when I say this. When I read Tune In from Mark Lewis and Apart mm. from loving all the information that's in the book, I feel like I'm in the book, <laughs> and I'm living, and I'm living with the Beatles when I'm reading Tune In. I feel the same way with Ken McNabb's book. I feel like you're really knowing everything going on around you in 1969 if you were one of the Beatles. It's really that thorough, and I really enjoy that book, which is now one of my prizes that you can win uh, on my website. Again, that's KenMichaelsRadio.com. Um, I just did an interview with a guy named John Borak, who is a contributing editor for Goldmine Magazine. He put out a book back in 2010 called John Lennon, Life is What Happens. And he has a new book coming out um, in February called The Beatles 100, 100 Pivotal Moments in Beatles History. But the reason why I interviewed John in this particular instance is because he did an article in Goldmine where he listed his top 10 favorite albums of 1971. And his top two albums were, number two, Ram, number Uh, one, Imagine. The top two albums of that year were solo Beatle albums. So I have him talking about both albums. That's on my website on interviews, page four. And hopefully I'll be talking to John again when the new book comes out in February. And last but not least, this other show called Talk More Talk, which Tom (laughs) is also a part of. And um, our next show, we're not going to have a new show until, remember the date, Tom? (laughs) September 21st? Yes. Okay. Our show is normally bi-weekly, just like things we said today. And Talk More Talk, which is all on the Solo Beatles, is a live video cast. And then later on, uh, the audio for the show is available on all the platforms that Tom just mentioned for two legs. It's all the same platform, (laughs) as well as staying on our Facebook page. But it's actually going to be our 50th show. So that means we've been doing this now for two years. And we're going to do something which we did before called Rack Our Brains, in which in this particular case, when we did it before, we're all asking each other uh, questions that none of us are prepared for and they're opinion-related questions. They're not trivia questions. So it just sprang on us, and we have to be quick, and we have to think of an answer, and it's interesting to know just off the top of your head what you can come up with. So we are inviting our listeners to be a part of that show, as it is our second anniversary and 50th show. So if you go to our Facebook page, you can find a link where you can uh, enter your name and hopefully be a part of it and be on screen with us and make fun of us (laughs) and get get to see what I really look like in person. I understand why most of my career it's been radio and not television. <laughs> so that's with Talk More Talk. And again, that's September the 21st. Go to our Facebook page if you right. want to be a part of that show. If you want to ask any of us questions, there's me, Tom, Kiddo Tool, Joe Mayo, also known as Mean Mr. Mayo, who has his own video uh, shows, his own right. video channel on YouTube. And Ken Womack, I believe, will be a part of that show. Sometimes he's there, sometimes he isn't. He's a busy guy, as as you should know from right. the news column. <laughs> every <laughs> week think. he has he has a new book out every week. <laughs> so um, if he can squeeze us in, he will be part of that show. Yeah. And maybe one, so, of, maybe uh, one of his clones can uh, join us. Okay, don't give him any ideas. <laughs> but um, if you if you haven't watched that show yet, go to our Facebook page, Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast. Subscribe to us, you know, be a part of the group, and you can watch the show live as it's happening. And it's on every other Monday night normally. The next show is September 21st at 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay? I think that covers everything. Hmm. Sounds like it. A lot of covering. We got it done. <laughs> Keep undercover. That's what we do right here. (laughs) All right. This has been great. Tom and Andy, thanks for coming on the show. And we're going to be on your next show. And as soon as we do know when that show is posted, we'll let you guys know on our Facebook page for things we said today, on my personal page, on Darren's personal page. We'll get the word out 
So, um, and then we'll talk about Paul and what we'd like to see Paul do with his archival uh, recordings and the Beatles stuff too. All right. So, thank you so much, guys, for being on the show. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, for awesome. For Darian DeVivo, Annie Nichols, and Tom Hunyadi, this is Ken Michael saying thanks so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Yeah.